Hi, I'm Brian Thoreau from the MSOE Perfusion Program, and in this video I'm going to be covering arterial pump head changeouts. So unlike an oxygenator failure changeout, uh, these situations are a little bit more stressful. When an oxygenator fails, we have a little bit of time to start disconnecting some ancillary lines, um, and we're still flowing to the patient. We may still be oxygenating a little bit. It's urgent, but not immediate. When a pump head ruptures, the pump must be immediately shut down, and this must be remedied very quickly. Uh, these can occur for any number of reasons, either a long pump run in which the tubing has been really stressed, or something actually gets inside the arterial pump head, which will stress it or cut it and cause it to rupture. So here we are, we're on pump, and all of a sudden our pump head ruptures. We immediately need to shut down the pump, clamp the venous line proximal and distal to the reservoir, and clamp the arterial line proximal and distal to the arterial line filter. We also need to let the surgeon and anesthesiologist know what has occurred and have someone run to the pump room and get us a new pump head. Uh, we're also going to need some connectors. Uh, we happen to use 3 8 inch line, so we're going to need two 3 8 to 3 8 inch connectors. We'll also need some alcohol or betadine swabs, a sterile scissors or scalpel, and we'll want some gun ties and a gun as well. Okay, now that we've got the pump shut down and our purges are closed, we're going to go ahead and clamp out these inlet and outlet to the pump head. So we already have one distal to the venous reservoir. We're going to pinch the tubing and add a second one. And we're going to also double clamp the outlet in the same manner. Now that we've done that, we're going to use an alcohol or betadine swab on here. And we're going to divide this line. And do the same side. We want to keep those sterile and now we're going to remove the arterial line from the pump head. Next we're going to remove the arterial line from the pump head and we're going to save this tubing so that we can inspect what went wrong with it. We're also going to look in the raceway here and see if there's any debris or anything sharp or anything in there that may have caused the pump head failure in the first place. Now we're going to take the new line and we're going to put a clamp at the distal end of it. And of course we're going to be keeping all this sterile. I know sometimes it's a little difficult for me to show that. Um, but then we're going to take a 3 8 inch connector and attach it to the outlet of the reservoir and attach it to the open end of the tubing. Now we're going to start gravity filling this line so that this isn't all full of air. Open up that clamp and then start gravity filling this line until I get fluid almost all the way up to the top. All right, so this is fluid filled now and I'm going to put this into the pump head. And I'm going to attach the other end with another connector, again keeping this sterile. To the inlet of the oxygenator here. Remove those clamps. Now that we've replaced the pump head, we're going to start flowing through the recirculation line. So I'm going to open up that, start flowing through the recirculation line, open up the other purges, and let that de-air. As soon as that's de-aired, I'm going to open up the clamp to the arterial line filter, the proximal side, open up that purge and we're going to let that flow and de-air through the arterial line filter. 
Now we're going to shut down the pump so that we can reinitiate bypass. So I'm going to shut down the pump, close all the purges. I'm going to remove the arterial line clamp that was still remaining. Turn the pump back on and reinitiate flow. Well, I hope this video will help you in the event that you ever need to change out an arterial pump head. Other than a massive air embolism, an arterial pump head rupture is probably the most serious catastrophic event that can occur to a perfusionist while on pump. And the arterial pump head rupture can very quickly lead to a massive air embolism if it, if it isn't caught immediately. So I hope you review this video and be sure to check out the related video on an oxygenator failure changeout.